Welcome to the EnSolver video tutorial series. This video covers the 3D quick start to analysis. We'll first cover how to import both RCC files and RLFs. Then we'll go through the process of analyzing data, just touching on each step lightly. We'll use the practice dataset that is included in your EnSolver download, the 3D Bio dataset. For more information on any step that we cover here, you'll want to consult the EnSolver user manual or see more detailed trainings which are forthcoming in this series. First, we'll import our data. Before we open EnSolver, we'll navigate to where our data is saved in its zipped folder. We'll extract it by right-clicking on the file and then selecting Extract All. If that option is not available, you may need to seek out an alternative software extraction tool. We should see an uncompressed folder with the same name as that data file up here. If we open that, we should see one RCC file for each sample. In this data set for ease of use, we've added the RCC files of the SMV reference set that we ran on a different run, as well as the RLF for each run in this file as well. Now we'll open EnSolver. Let's start with the RLF import. You'll need an RLF if you plan on using the Advanced Analysis plugin, running a multi-RLF experiment, or using any of the samples as SMV references. Select Import RLF. Browse to navigate to the folder with your unzipped data, highlight your RLF, and select Open, then Import. If you have any SMV data and your references were run on a different RLF, you'll want to repeat the process to import that RLF now. Next, we'll import the RCC files. Select one of the Import RCC Files buttons, browse to navigate to the folder with the unzipped data, highlight all RCC samples, and select Open. Note that the Analyte Types column lists the Analyte types detected in your data, and the boxes in the Code Set Loaded column are checked, indicating that we've already imported that RLF file. If your data has Fusion data, select the Data Has Fusion Probes button to designate Fusion Probes in your code set. Otherwise, all of these probes will be treated as mRNA probes. For more information on fusion analysis, refer to the EnSolver 4.0 manual or the All About Fusion guide. Select Next. This automatically brings up the QC window. We need to use the double arrow in the upper right-hand corner to reveal the top three system QC parameters. The activated buttons in the panel of analytes along the left side of the window represent the analytes detected in your data. Selecting an analyte reveals the default QC parameters associated with it. You may change the QC parameters, but this is not usually recommended nor necessary. Select Import. Once we've completed the import process, we can find our RCC data files under those corresponding RLF code sets on the Raw Data tab. Our samples are under 3D Solid Tumor, and SNV references are under NSST DNA. Now we'll explore the raw data and assess any QC flags. Selecting the code set name, 3D Solid Tumor, allows us to view all RCC files under it in a table format. We can edit fields in the Description and Batch ID columns if we would like. The Description column is available to add description to samples that might be informative for tracking. This information is not used for analysis as annotations are when building an experiment. The Batch ID column allows you to record code set lot numbers or other identifying information of potential sources of variability in a run. You can type this information directly into the cells or copy and paste from another source. As we scroll to the right in this table, we notice that the first QC column is labeled simply QC flag. A flag in this column indicates that there is a QC flag of some sort associated with this sample. Farther to the right, we'll be able to see the specific QC columns and we'll be able to start to investigate any flag samples. Select the Column Options icon in the upper right corner to select columns you'd like to see. You can also select the column headers to sort data or drag them where you'd like them to be. One simple way to check your data is to highlight all samples and select the Table button. We can scroll through the results from different probes, observe the result from our controls under the Class Name column, and we can use this filter expression data tool above the table to search for certain groups or types of probes. Column headers in red represent flagged samples. Now let's create an experiment. 
Select a new study button from the main dashboard and enter a unique study name. Select Save. We'll find our new study on the Experiments tab and we can highlight it. Now we'll select a new experiment button on the main dashboard and enter a unique experiment name. Select Next. We'll select the 3D Solid Tumor SIG code set and then select the samples we want to include in the experiment. For this example, we'll use all the samples in the data set. Select Next. We'll create annotations now. Create two annotation categories by selecting Add Annotation twice. Change New Annotation to Treatment and New Annotation 2 to BRAF Genotype. Add the specific annotations under the new column. We'll add DMSO or VAM for treatment and WildType WildType for SKML 2 samples or Mutant Mutant for SKML 28 samples under BRAF Genotype. Select Next. Background noise can be filtered out using subtraction or thresholding, and this is optional. By default, background correction will be checked off, and in most cases, you won't need to deviate from this. If you are performing background correction on your data, thresholding is recommended for most analyte types. In this example, we'll leave background correction off. Select Next. The recommended normalization settings for most analyte types will appear by default. Note that there's a positive control normalization field and a code set content normalization field. Use the tabs to review the settings for the different analyte types. Select Next. The next step in the analysis of this example dataset is SNV probe calibration. Use the Select RCC files from a different RLF button since there are no SNV reference samples under the present RLF. Highlight the NSST DNA code set and highlight all SNV reference samples and select Add Selected Reference Samples. You should see the SNV reference samples in the Selected SNV Reference Samples window. Select Next. In Creating Ratios, we have a couple of different options. For this example, we'll select Partitioning By. It will default to one of the annotations we entered earlier, Treatment, and we'll choose a treatment type as a reference, in this case, DMSO. For this example, we'll keep these defaults, but they can be changed using the drop-down menus if desired. You can use the checkbox to calculate the false discovery rate, or FDR. Select Next. Use the checkboxes here to confirm the ratios to calculate, and select Finish. Our experiment will now be built and will be stored under the corresponding study on the Experiments tab. Expanding the navigation tree next to it allows us to view all levels of data in the experiment. Here we'll discuss what levels of data you'll find here. The raw data contains unprocessed data. The normalized data contains data after normalization and background correction have been applied. As a side note, the variant table for SNV data can be found under this level. For more information on SNV analysis, you'll want to refer to the NSolver manual or the All About SNV guide. The grouped data contains groups as defined by the annotations created earlier. And the ratio data contains full change results and statistical inferences from the ratios created by those groups. The analysis level will have any analysis that you may have performed on this data. For guidance on creating visualizations, consult webinars later in this series. This concludes the NSolver video tutorial lesson, the 3D Quick Start. For additional support, contact Nanostring Support, and check out our other training curriculum online. Thank you.